summing up probability today because we're getting uh, a lot. We've had a lot of probability so far, and I want to make sure you haven't missed out on all these little pieces. They're all going to come together for the test, which is coming soon, this Friday to be exact. So I want you on your scratch paper to define probability and use the word outcome twice when you define it. Okay, so what'd you have? Yes. Favorable outcomes over possible outcomes. All right. So it's really crucial to keep coming back to that because what we have been doing for a while are permutations and combinations, which give you how many totals there are, but they don't give you a probability. To get a probability, you have to divide. And a lot of times what we've been calculating is like this possible, like how many possible hands are there? Well, now we're going to start plugging them into probability problems, and you've got to be able to do both. You've got to do the permutations and combinations and put them into probabilities. All right. So let's uh, go back to talking about a die. Well, if you have a die, you've got six different things that could come up on the die, right? And that means that there's six different possible outcomes. And if you get to pick one of them as your number, and if it comes up, all right, everybody take a guess. What's going to come up next? Write it down. Write it down. Take a guess. Now, what's the probability you're right? Exactly. you got one that's favorable out of six. So well, here it comes. What's a two? Who said a two? I had a f about five of you. All right, good job. Now, if I asked six people, wouldn't it make sense that about one of them would be right? So if there's, how many sets of six would you say there are in here? There's about 30 of you, so there's about five sets of six. So there should be about five people that had it right, and there were five people that had it right. Probabilities usually come out that way. But that's like saying probabilities usually, when you flip a coin uh, ten times, you usually will get five heads and five tails. But do you always? No. Okay. Uh, that's the difference between theoretical probability, what it's supposed to be, and experimental, which is what actually happens when you do an experiment. Okay, next, let's talk about if you had to do the coin, which of course is a one in two probability, and the die, which is the one in six probability. What's the probability of getting them both right? Well, when you have different choices, I have two choices here. I have a one in two chance of getting this one right. And I have six choices here. Think, whenever you hear that there's choices, Think about that in terms of multiplying your choices. So I'm going to multiply this out, and it's going to be a 1 in 12 chance. I'd like you to try this right now. Take a guess. Write it down in your paper. Like head 6 or whatever you're going to guess. Just take a guess. All right, here we go. Start. Stop. Heads. And... Two. Raise your hand if you had heads in two. Nobody. All right. Well, actually, I would have expected somebody to get that, but they didn't. That brings up expected value. All right. Let's say that we were just talking about this die here, and uh, I was talking about having a game where if you roll a one, two, three, or a four, you get a buck. A one, a two, a three, or a four, you get a buck for each of those. But if you roll a five or a six, you get five bucks. What would be the fair value to play that game? Well, expected value means P, probability of something happening, times what? A, the amount you get, and then what do you do? P times A, then add. Try it right now on your scratch paper. Okay, so there's a 1 in 6 chance of getting this. That's the probability times the amount you'll get is a buck. And that comes out to, I think, 16 cents. And no need to recompute that each time because it'll be the same for all four of these, right? 16, 16, and 16. What's the probability for the next one? Joy. Well, what's the probability of this happening? Come on, you can do it. Just what's the probability of getting a five? 
What's the probability of getting a 5? There you go. That's all I asked. And then I'm going to do probability times the amount, and that comes out to 5 sixths. And if it's 5 sixths of a dollar, what is that? How much? 833. I'm going to call it 83 cents. And then this last one must be the same. And now, Joey, you said you had the total. What is that? So that's how much you should expect to get if you played the game. So if this game was available for playing for a dollar, it would be a no-brainer, right? I mean, you could just think about that one. You'd always get your money back or make five bucks or make four bucks, actually. So that'd be easy. If the game was priced at $2.33, it would be exactly fair. Hard to tell whether you should even play or not. On average, you're likely to get your money back, but then again, you're not going to make anything either. So the answer for this one, though, would be that, yes, it's fair, more than fair, actually, at if they charge $2, you could play uh, and expect that you'd actually win something. Most games are, of course, set up so that you will not win over the long haul. All right, try this one. This is uh, a review of doing P's and C's by hand. Okay, so it's six factorial over six minus four factorial. That would be six factorial over two factorial. Six, five, four, three, two, one. All over two times one cancels, cancels. And that seems like a lot to multiply, but you can do it with six times five. Thirty times four? One twenty. One twenty times three? Three sixty. Raise your hand if you had three sixty. Excellent. Okay. Moving on to the next one. It's gonna be exactly like this one, so I'm just gonna bring this over here. Except Sam, what's different on the bottom? Yes, this guy gets put in there also. So I'm going to take my answer and effectively I'm dividing by 4 times 3 times 2, which makes it a lot smaller. It was 360 and it's going to be, in fact I can figure that out, 4 times 3 times 2, 4 times 3 times 2, this extra thing on the bottom is 24. So I'm dividing it by 24. So whatever my answer is, take 360 and divide it by 24 and that'll be it. Another way to do it is, of course, just to do the 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1 on top, and then 2 times 1 here, and then 4, 3, 2, 1 here, and then these cancel, cancel, and it's 30 divided by 2, which is 15. Raise your hand if you had that one right. Okay, good. Do you remember how to do them by hand then? So, Olympics question. Olympics started for another year, but they'll be up in Canada. I'm sure the smart... People will be happy. Uh, the people who make the smart board come from Canada. Uh, it's going to be the Winter Olympics, which, of course, Canada should excel. And there's gold, silver, bronze. And are we talking permutation or combination as soon as I say gold, silver, and bronze? Permutation, because why? Order matters. All right. Picking two people for the Olympic committee, committee being the key word. Committees don't have an order, like you're better than this person, so order doesn't matter. So, combinations. This one, I want to see what you think of that. Finding all sets of two colors from the rings. All right. Now, some kids at last hour said permutation. Why do you think that they might have said permutation? What's the key question here about the rings? Does the order matter or not? And if it's not clear, you're welcome to ask me because then the question really wasn't a very good question. Because you need to know, does, does it matter or not? Because if green-yellow is different than yellow-green, then I should use what? The permutation. Okay, but it's not super clear. So this one, actually, I'd prefer you to not be so sure of. But I agree, if I had to pick, since it doesn't mention the order, I would have picked combination two. All right, and this last one, the top two finishers will make the team. Combination. And the order doesn't matter because it's the top two. Get it? Like if you're in the second place, 
Thank you. Time is almost up here.